Hi, my name is Julia Gonzalez and I welcome you to my channel. If you've never been here before, I love to travel to experience new cultures and amazing delicious foods. This week we explore the amazing Argentine pizza known as Fugaceta. We'll share with you where you can get the best Fugaceta when visiting Buenos Aires. And if you're feeling adventurous, we'll show you how you can make this amazing treat at home. Pizzeria Garin was founded in 1932 by the Italians Franco Malvesi and Guido Grantona and is regarded as one of the best places in Buenos Aires for pizza. You can tell it's no secret when you see the very long lines of people who come near and far to grab just a bite of the amazing wood-fired oven pizza. So last night we tried to get in here. It was absolutely packed and crazy. So finally got a table today. That's right. The night before, the line was out the door and around the block. So we decided to come back when they opened the next day and got seated right away. But don't let this fool you. We got here just as they opened. Normally you do have to wait in line. Even though you can see they have a lot of seating. Originating from Argentina, Fugaceta is mozzarella stuffed pizza topped with onions. The onions should be thinly sliced and they can either be raw or sauteed. The dough is usually made with milk, water, yeast, flour, sugar, salt, and olive oil. Oh my gosh. Mm. Okay, I get what's all the fuss about. The cheese is absolutely delicious. There's so much of it. There's no sauce. Cheese, onion, ham. ham. Sorry, I can't eat and talk. And ham. Wow. <laughs> I wasn't even really in the mood for pizza this morning, but this place is such a staple. I wanted to come and try, but this pizza is so good. Like, I'm in the mood now. Delicious. It doesn't matter the time of day you stop by Pizzeria Garin. It's amazing. If you don't want to deal with lines, then just try to get there when they first open. Some have referred to this next stop as the King of Fugaceta. La Mazeta is a historic standing room only establishment in Buenos Aires. You're gonna have to stand in line, but again, it's so worth the wait. You should probably know some Spanish for when you have to place your order. You're gonna order with this kind gentleman here in the window, and then you're gonna wait again until your name is called so you can pick up your food. I know what you're thinking. Isn't this the place where Phil Rosenthal, during one of his episodes of Somebody Feed Phil, came and complained about the napkins? Well, yeah, you're right. And the bad news is the napkins are still the same. No, it's okay. But I can tell you, once you try the pizza, you'll forget about the napkins. Holy oh, crap. Oh, God. The dough on this pizza was like no other dough I've ever had. It was extraordinary. But we quickly ate and moved on so we could let these other kind folks in here to eat as well. My name's Julia Gonzalez and this is Klutz in the Kitchen. <laughs> Obviously, I went to Argentina and I had amazing fugaceta. I love the fugaceta. I fell in love. So now I'm back home in Florida and like, you can't buy fugaceta. <laughs> where are we going? Where am I going to get fugaceta? So I'm going to try to make it here 
in my kitchen. So let's talk ingredients. We're gonna try to make the same pizza that we had at Pizzeria Gorin. So let's go over the ingredients. We've got onions, Parmesan cheese, provolone cheese, mozzarella cheese. We've got our ham. And we got our pizza dough. So let's get started. Okay. So first I need to start with the, the bottom layer of the pizza. I'm just gonna add some flour here and I'm gonna need to kinda start flattening it out. So I just go. And we flip it. Okay, so this is a good size. I have this like nice, thick, hearty pan here. So we're gonna get the pan ready so we can put the dough in the pan. So I'm just gonna add some oil. So now I'm gonna put the pizza dough in the pan. That's what I wanna do. Remember guys, I'm a klutz, but I wanna try to get this nice and stretched out so it covers the pan. So you just wanna make sure that the sides are stretched out and you wanna give it a little like extra because you're gonna have another layer that you're gonna try to connect the dough to. So just make sure it's stretched out. I've added a little bit of olive oil here. Just get it stretched out. And now we're gonna add the layers of cheese, the first layers of cheese. You don't want it outside of this exterior layer here. So you just wanna put it on the interior. I'm just gonna layer it in here, get that cheese. I mean, who doesn't love cheese? I was like, oh, so much cheese on this. So look at this mountain of cheese, pound of cheese on this dough. So I need to add my ham. So I'm gonna add a couple layers of ham here. Again, I'm gonna try to keep to like where the cheese is not going out of that outer layer. All right, so now I need to add the Parmesan cheese. So I'm just gonna add this. Another layer here. Ooh, it's kind of sticking, sorry. Just get it all covered here. So now it's time to roll that top layer. Now remember, the top layer needs to be thinner than the bottom layer, so it cooks evenly. So that, you know, the heat is at the bottom, it'll cook, you know, that bottom thick part, but this needs to be thinner. So we need to roll it out to be lay on top. Let's do this. I'm just gonna And it's very worried that I'm gonna ruin this dough. <laughs> Let's roll these out. Roll in. Just gotta roll this dough out, make it nice and thin so we can put it on top here. Okay. Just gonna fold it over. Let's bring it over here. Ooh. Okay. Tie it first. And just bring it closer here. Okay, so you want to seal it so the cheese doesn't escape. So see how I'm tying it together like our empanadas? Just kind of rolling the dough and bringing it together. Add some olive oil to the top of it. And I'm just going to smudge that around here. Oh, I think I need some more. And then what I need to do is I need to make some holes in my dough. Let me just grab something here. Because I need the gas to be able to escape. Because if it doesn't escape, it just blows up. 
So this way, it's kind of like a pie. This way the gas will escape and it won't blow up. So my oven is now set to 400 degrees. I'm gonna put my pizza in for 20 minutes and then we're gonna take it out to add those onions. So my pizza's in the oven and it's gonna cook for about 20 minutes before I add the onions, but I need to saute the onions because if you add them raw to the pizza, what's gonna happen is they're gonna sweat and that sweat's gonna get into the pizza dough and then it's not gonna cook. So we need to make sure that we saute the onions, we drain the onions, and then we can add them halfway through of the pizza cooking. Oh, where did I get my earrings? Yes, I got my earrings in Argentina. Yeah, they're handmade. The San Telmo Market on Sundays, or Saturdays and Sundays, you can find the vendor that made these. Yeah, they were. Okay, let's do this. So first I'm gonna add some oil. Okay, and then I'm gonna add my onions. All right, and then I'm just gonna season with some salt and pepper. my salt. I like a lot of salt, sorry. And let's get these sauteed. So it's been about 20 minutes and I'm gonna take the pizza out. I'm going to add the onions that have been drained and then we're gonna put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes. Let's get, let's get the pizza out. I guess, I guess my husband feels like I, I'm hopefully not gonna burn myself using these. Amazing. I, I can't even like function with these. All right. Oh, it smells so good. Oh my God. Fresh. Hello, baby. Hello. So here are the onions. They've been sauteed. They have been drained and they're ready to be added to the pizza. Let's just add to the top. All right, so then what we wanna do, I wanna just add a little bit more grated Parmesan, just to, you know, not that it doesn't have enough cheese already, but I just wanna add a little bit more to the top, a little bit more olive oil to the top. people. Let's get protected. Here we are. It only took about 15 minutes to cook. So um, we're going to get it out and we're going to let it cool for about 10 minutes before cutting. Uh, for a total of 35 minutes. This was a lot easier than it. completed this task and I'm actually amazed at how much it wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be uh, it makes me miss Argentina but I'm glad I was able to make it at home and I'm very happy with it My name is Julia Gonzalez. This is Klutz in the Kitchen. And remember, get out. There's a whole world you deserve to see.